Furries are often a form of self-expression, envisioning yourself as a persona to match your ideals. In order to bridge this gap between you the person and this idealized form, some use fursuits to add a sense of reality to their character. However, this has not always come without controversy. Whether a suit is made by a disgusting creator or if the suit is made in a disgusting way, tales from the internet tell stories of these horrors. Today's topic is a bit different, more so leaning towards the side of polarizing. If your ideals are, let's say, right-winged politically, how you express yourself will be highly contentious. Today we'll be talking about Magnus Deridian, an attention-seeking degenerate that not only encapsulates this section of the furry community, but has done some other atrocious acts as well. In 2015, Magnus would create a fursuit design that caught the attention of many. It doesn't take a genius to work out why that is. A fursuit acting as a walking billboard for a certain politically charged flag. The color palette for his wolf design would copy elements along with patterning along the backside that would match identically. This would result in a really striking design. One obviously used to grab attention. If that wasn't obvious enough, this design was made in 20. 2015, a time of growing political rivalry spurred on by the upcoming 2016 American elections. To give a demonstration of that, Magnus would pose with signs calling for the support of Trump pre-election. As the furry community is mostly known to be a very left-leaning space, Magnus's suit would generate a lot of talk. Unlike most furry drama, this wasn't just subject to Twitter, as real-world repercussions would soon come to Magnus as a result of his performances. Around the same time of creation, Magnus would take his suit to Midwest Fur Fest 2015. Not long after arrival, he would be detained, asked to leave, and subsequently banned from the convention. Although Magnus and his Confederate flag fursuit Arkansas wouldn't stay silent forever, as two years later in Amphicon 2017, he would bore his little head again, his confederate flag loving wolf head, reportedly attempting to use a white cloth to hide the confederacy beneath it. His attempts wouldn't last long. Upon being recognized, he was ordered to remove his suit per Amphicon's fursuiting policies. They would also learn that Magnus had not paid his membership fee that year, leading to him being kicked from the con. Although his most infamous convention was his run-in with the law at Midwest Fur Fest 2017. I guess he thought his attempts weren't enough, so this time he adorned a different fursuit. One that whilst initially doesn't seem to include any directly harmful material, until you look at his accessories. That on his head is a World War I styled helmet, with a furry paw emblem as a finishing touch. This alongside his reported Nazi expletives he was blurting out around the con, saw him getting taken into custody, arrested outside the con in his underwear, which I'm sure was a pleasant experience for Magnus and a very interesting story for the cops. More pathetically, Magnus would set up a fundraising attempt for legal fees, as the staff of Midwest Fur Fest had pressed both battery and trespassing charges, although this would fall flat and he would delete said fundraiser soon after announcement. It would be told that he spent three days in a holding cell after the incident, and was released on a $100 bail. This begs the question, what was the motive behind his confederate flag fursuit Arkansas? Aside from the obvious answer of attention, Magnus himself gives further backstory on the making of the suit. He tells the story of his emotions, stricken with grief upon seeing his beloved flag torn down in multiple places across America. It's beyond entertaining to watch him try and dance his way around racism when explaining his motives. I heard a black woman in the audience saying, take it down, take it down, yes we can, yes we can, yes we can. And as the flag came down, the crowd cheered. And for me, I got sick and tired of seeing the Confederate flag being under attack. I never once thought about black people when I was making a scene. A sign of rebellion, not slavery, but freedom. Now that you've got a bit of an understanding of this enigma of a 51 year old we have here, let's delve into some other controversies surrounding this guy. All of which probably make him the most punchable furry of all time, but I'm not advocating for anything. We'll start with his criminal charges, just to really set the scene of Magnus's history of degeneracy. Magnus was arrested for acts such as theft in both 1999 and 2002, but in 2004 Magnus would face a new court sentence, in which he would be charged with what we'll call teriyaki threats. 
causing both evacuation and public inconvenience, as well as harassment, disorderly conduct, and recklessly endangering another human. Through the use of the Pennsylvania web portal, we can see that the case docket has been marked as withdrawn, meaning the prosecutor has formally withdrawn the charges. Generally, at least to my knowledge, which is to say not much in American legal systems, implies a sort of plea deal has been arranged, of which the terms and conditions are not listed. So what was this teriyaki threat? He walked into a bank before employing chemical means directly in front of the teller possibly set free for a bail of 5 grand, but who's to tell really? Even more unknown is the suspect of the 2014 Midwest Furfest chemical attacks. Now I will preface that this is entirely speculatory. None of this is known or in any way been completely proven. It is very plausible that Magnus shared no responsibility, and I advised everyone to not see this as any reflection on Magnus without sufficient evidence. I am mentioning it on the basis that it is interesting and relevant. Legally speaking, this is not factual. In 2014, 19 people were hospitalized following a chemical release at Midwest Fairfest. The police identified that a suspect released a jar of chlorine gas from the ninth floor of a hotel. Many attendees would be sheltered away from MFF temporarily, whilst the problem was attended to by first responders. No one was charged for the incident, so a fair deal of panic on what caused someone to commit this act floated around the community. This mild panic was amongst fears of further attacks on furries, or at an upcoming Comic Con that would have a larger population population of potential victims. However, Magnus was named as a potential suspect in the investigation. All further information about Magnus in this case will be credited to Dogpatch Press, a renowned furry news site who have done an excellent job harvesting evidence for this claim. I will link them and more below for further information and context. Magnus' roommate at a 2014 con detailed how he would run out of the streets wearing his fursuit. Con staff would confront him, almost progressing to Magnus's badge being revoked. This apparently made Magnus upset. When Dogpatch questioned if they thought Magnus had any involvement, the roommate quote, fought at some point, but no more than briefly. When police did a search of his apartment, they found red duct tape, which belonged to one of Magnus's roommates at the time. Reasoning for this was that it was similar to the tape used in the device's construction. Magnus was also physically capable of acquiring chlorine from his place of work. When asked where he was at the time of the incident, Magnus would say, quote, Well, I was on one of the higher floors, eating Chinese food with Cyber Fox. Then I came back to the room and talked to McLeod Wolf, and then the sirens went off. This would identify that he was high up in the building at the time. All this information alongside his history of behavior was reasoning for being a lead suspect. Although, as Dogpatch admits, much of this information is circumstantial. Magnus vehemently denies the allegations. Therefore, it is not right for me to assume guilt. I will leave some sources below, it could very well be likely that another roommate or someone entirely different was involved in this incident. However, to put aside stories of suspicion, let's talk about some more known and egregious aspects about Magnus. This relates back to Magnus' fursuit endeavours. As described previously, Magnus was all too fond of making attention-grabbing suits. As for a lot of his life, he did it for the thrill and he did it for the clout. Well, he would do this again, in the form of impersonating one Lemonade Coyote a fursuiter who tragically passed away. They worked in emergency medical service, and one day whilst travelling early morning duty, they were hit by a black Honda going upwards of 20% of the legal speed limit. Timothy, or Lemonade Coyote, would pass away from the resulting injuries. It was the 16th of February 2013, around 3.37am. He was 26 years old. Many in the fandom would share their condolences, including through now old Fur Affinity accounts, before doing so was disabled on request by loved ones. Magnus found himself roped into this story in the following year, at Amphicon 2014. Here Magnus would create what was dubbed a bootleg version of Lemonade Coyote's primary fursuit, a pink, white, and yellow colored coyote. This fursuit was obviously generative of a lot of shock value. Many people would express their disgust towards this impersonation, acting to exploit this death in a vain attempt for attention. Use of the suit would appear at both 2014 and the 2017 conventions for Amphicon. However, the backlash doesn't deter Magnus. As outlined already, not much does. He's still a prevalent character who bores his head every now and again. In recent times, Magnus will create a suit inspired by Braxton Dogger. I say inspired, but in reality, this was another attempt at impersonation. Reportedly, Magnus would defend his suit under Braxton being his fursuit crush. Just so we're all aware, Magnus's fursuit crush Braxton Dogger was a suit he liked so much 
he decided to create a replica for his own, one that he would wear around at conventions. Imitation isn't a form of flattery in this regard. It's creepy, it's gross, and would in fact reflect poorly on Braxton, as the chosen convention site where Magnus would adorn this suit was Free For All 2022. For the unaware, Free For All is a convention first operating on July 29th, 2022 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The convention is well established in its right-wing views, with founders, guests of honours, and many, many attendees being linked to alt-right extremist groups often hosting those who are racist, misogynistic, transphobic, and bigoted in almost every form, including zoophiles and members of the Furry Raiders, a group heavily associated with neo culture. The founders, Amphro West Open Organization or a WU organization, are a 501c3 charity. You may remember that term from my hypnotist Sappho video. The organization claims to support no specific religion or political group. However, that message is skewed when taking the entirety of Free For All into account. The actual owners of the org are hard to pin down as they are suspiciously secretive of this information. However, an individual known to pull some of the strings is Peace Wolf, who has spread some racist rhetoric such as All Lives Matter, a term used to undermine BLM movements and doesn't recognize black inequality, but more importantly has been known to converse with people of the furry raiders, and is currently in a polyamorous relationship with the infamous J Jason FX and Kabir, who I won't delve into much as Lanza recently did this far more intensely in a recent video, which I actually edited by the way if you want to check that out. But long story short, they made the dating sim amorous, amorous, whatever, but treated employees terrible. Both are racist, Jason groomed Kabir as a minor, both made cub content, and manipulated almost everyone around them. And fun fact, Jason and Kabir are going to be the guests of honour at the upcoming Free For All 2023. Although the 2022 guest of honour was a comedian to Griffin. And I say comedian in huge ear quotes, cause god, his performance was just electrifying. Uh, I'll leave. I'm checking. I'm trying to think of something else to talk about. I want to do the toaster one, but I can't remember. A lot of people don't know what Kelly is. His bio reads anti-woke, he's got ties to the fairy raiders, it's rinse and repeat for a lot of these degenerates. But back to the con itself, the attendees were littered with far-right furries. Many members of the furry raiders such as the leader Foxler and administrator Ava Nova. For a good look at the attendees, the coveted fursuit parade lines them up just nicely. Absolutely bursting with energy, practically flying across the room, engaging with the near absent audience we see Peace Wolf, Ava, Jason and Kabir, all people that we've already addressed. However, there's Diesel Raccoon, a renowned racist and known inflator for the big and round. Crusader Cat, another member of the Furry Raiders and there's nothing more I need to add there. But amongst the sea of other racists, we have Magnus, wearing one of his intimidation suits. And this is what demonstrates a massive problem with his actions. Not only is it disgustingly disrespectful, but it's lumping what could be mistaken for the real suitor in with the ideology pushed by the con, putting the suit alongside the most bigoted people in this fandom. Magnus is just like a little parasite that won't leave, a mosquito still buzzing around and apparently deterred by nothing. What's next for Magnus? Well, I can only imagine the delight Free For All 2023 will bring. Between the 28th and the 30th of July, we're expecting a second helping of Free For All, another collection of low-cow degenerates ranging from racism to actual hate crimes. What type of behavior are we going to see? Who knows, maybe Magnus will hop in the ball pit again and scribble Misha B. Barking's name on paper. Cause what shows your masculinity but this image right here? But in reality, Magnus isn't tough. All he does is expose the underbelly of bigotry in this fandom. And I think that's something that a lot of people fail to realize. Sure, this fandom is a very accepting place. For many, it's an expression of their queer identity, away from society's shaming. Whilst it's relatively progressive overall, it's far exempt from bigotry of all forms. Many groups experience this phenomenon. Arguably the most infamous is feminism, with its subsection of trans-exclusionary radical feminists. Turfs. Misogynistic beliefs are often present in this fandom, which isn't surprising given its imbalance of female representation and population statistics. However, it's great to see the backlash towards these groups of people, standing up for what is right and not letting these degenerates define the fandom. 
Every time Crusader Cat appears at some convention, it's like a mocking competition on Twitter. So if Free Fall 2023 goes through, which I know will be funny, but I hope it doesn't, I would prefer these degenerates had just no way to express themselves. But as it seems, it's set to go through later this month, and we can only wait to find out what happens then. Thanks for watching, losers. I'll see you next time. Peace.